when do we do it? Indications. Um, so any sort of uh, exploratory laparotomy short for X-Lab, okay, which means that we want to take a look inside there to explore what's happening inside there. Like a dog that may have eaten a foreign body and, uh, and you're concerned about foreign body obstruction. Or just simply looking inside, why is this animal not well? What is this lump that I felt when you ultrasound something? So that's what we call an X-Lab. So we use it to visualize the abdominal organs to try and find abnormalities. One huge advantage over this that compared to open spay is that, uh, so for example, if a dog wasn't well and um, the, 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 they run a blood test and the liver enzymes are raised and all these sort of different things and they want to find, okay, whether there's something inside the belly, inside the abdomen. If we do an X lab, open up, and we find example of tumor, usually, not all the time, but usually, the vet will ring the owner and say, look, I found a lot of tumor inside there. And the decision usually will be, I don't want the dog to go through too much, you know, to wake it up again, so they put it to sleep. With a keyhole approach, the recovery is so much faster that sometimes without something random, even when we find tumor inside there, but the quality of life of the dog is still good. Okay, we can go inside there, take a biopsy, take it out, uh, and, and you know, send it off to the lab or whatsoever, and close everything up, and the dog can still go home. But it doesn't have the whole trauma of having a huge incision to contend with, and that sometimes makes a decision for the owner to actually keep the dog with them a little bit more, provided the quality of life is not compromised, a little bit longer, a bit more viable, compared to knowing that your dog has just undergone a full surgery, there will be a slightly longer recovery time for a terminal disease. So that is one indication whereby x -Lab is certainly more, uh, um, uh, more sort of uh, approachable using this particular technique, keyhole rather than opening up. Um, if you're wanting to do sample the organs, uh, organ biopsy, so same again, but also the liver, kidney, pancreas, spleen, lymph nodes. Traditionally, without keyhole, you'll be opening up and taking a sample. So same again, very, very big incision site. Whereas with keyhole surgery, you can sample all these um, organs accurately, sufficiently, and adequately to get a diagnosis of whatever you want. But the post-op recovery is so much faster. So you don't have to subject the dog through all these uh, huge surgical sites. Um, so, same again, so biopsy for sort of tumours or abnormal tissues. Is it correct that if you take a biopsy of uh, a tumour or a mouse or something like that, it can aggravate it and make it worse? Um, one of the things that, uh, so the definition of tumour, okay, so long and short of it, not really, but there's a single risk, okay, of if this is the abdomen, you put your pot through, example, you take a tumour, Okay, and you pull it through, there's a potential of it seeding onto the surgical, uh, onto the site that we're going through if you're not using a surgical port. Okay, so another thing that they can do is they can actually remove tumors. Okay, so uh, like you can remove the spleen, entire spleen through keyhole. It is, it's, it's interesting you mentioned this. So there are a few different things that we can do that. So uh, different ways we can do that. So through keyhole, we can actually isolate a spleen. Okay. And you, there is special bags that you can put in through keyhole and put a whole spleen into the bag so that you cannot just put a spleen on this because the, the tumor may seed along the abdomen area. Okay, you can put a whole bag through. Okay, then this is a little bit more disgusting, but it is that's what they do. You can put a macerator through and macerate everything, mush everything up so it slips out through keyhole as well. That's how you can remove a big organ through a small hole. <laughs> So that is uh, so. So it's just one of those. But whether actually getting a sample from the tumor aggravates the tumor, um, that is more unlikely. It's more unlikely. Yeah, it's more of you don't have the risk of seeding. Yeah. Um, and as we discussed before, uh, keyhole surgery space. You can certainly do keyhole surgery as well. Yeah. Cryptorchid testis removal. So cryptorchid means when the testicles are actually still formed in the abdomen. And uh, certainly for those situations without keyhole, you'll be doing an uh, X-Lab. So open up, look for the testicles, remove that. With keyhole, you can actually use a keyhole-assisted uh, way to so that you don't have a big incision over that. You can just remove what you need to do in a much more smaller um, surgical site, improving the um, recovery rate. Many other procedures requiring access to that abdomen. It's just how much, um, I mean, there are things like gallbladder removals, um, it's just like I said in human medicine, pretty much a lot of it is keyhole already. So I had it for my gallbladder. 
So everything is trying to improve the recovery rate. Let's talk about keyhole space. So overectomy versus overhysterectomy. So this is just a little bit of a sort of revision behind what we discussed uh, before. So overectomy means taking the ovaries out only. Overhysterectomy means removing the ovaries and the uterus. Which is better? Um, good question. So in general, the um, in, UK, in, in sort of UK, we have always done overhysterectomy or OVH for short as a traditional method and that's what we've been taught in that college. In Europe, overectomy has been the um, approved procedure for neutering uh, for the past 30 years. And um, what we've found out is that without the influence of the hormones from the ovaries, the uterus doesn't really do too much. In fact, what it does is that when you remove the ovaries, you go in back into the same abdomen six months later, without the influence of the ovaries, the hormones, you'll find that the uterus will have shrunk down to just two little fibrous tissue. So the question would be, why do we do an overhysterectomy compared to an overectomy? And in fact, um, there are there have been sort of uh, vets um, that, that say that you know overhysterectomy is a barbaric way of spaying the animal. So it is just more of tradition that we learn OVH, overhysterectomy, than overectomy. But certainly, which is better? So that's a very good question. So for me, when I do keyhole space, what I do is I visually look at the uterus. If that visually looks normal, I do an overhysterectomy. If the uterus, for whatever reason, looks abnormal, then I just take everything out, just in case. But we do know that just taking the ovaries out, you will solve all the neutering issues that you're wanting to solve with uh, overhysterectomy. Because you do not have the like, uh, you don't have the hormone influence, so you won't get uh, the dog won't get pregnant. Uh, because without the hormone influence as well, you won't get a pyometra, and any sort of behavioral signs that are due to the hormone, like cystic ovaries, they're taking on ovaries anyway, so they'll resolve the issue. So in my opinion, if the uterus is okay, we leave it inside. We just take out the, over, uh, the ovaries. If the uterus looks abnormal, we whip everything out. Yeah. Um, anatomy of ovaries, so you can uh, see, so like I said, the ovaries are found behind here, okay, so we can actually see where the ovaries are very, very clearly as you'll see in the video later. We do tilt the body mid surgery because as I said, the, the ovaries are behind here, so when I put in, uh, when I put in a instrument, I haven't got my fingers to rummage, so what we do is that we tilt the dog, okay, so for example, if this is the dog, okay? Head is this side, back side is this side, and the belly is facing up, like how we would position a dog under anesthesia. Under anesthesia. If we want access to the left ovary, we will tilt it like this. So now the left ovary, there's nothing blocking the left ovary but the abdominal wall. Then we can remove, and then we can take the ovary up, then we can remove the ovary. And after that, we'll tilt everything around again to the right ovary. So there's no rummaging. It's literally, you see it on the surface and you pick it up and you do it. So that's why we, we use gravity to help us to shift the organs around, which is certainly what you cannot do if it was an open space because if you tilt to the side, everything falls off. So that's not good. Um, yeah. So crypto kit. Before I do that, I'm just going to show you this little video of The nice music as well. <clears throat> so this is Tammy. She came to be empty to be spayed. That's the setup. So there's quite a lot of prep. Then we give her the anesthetic drug first. So that's after a pre-med when she's a little bit sleepy. We induce with the anesthetic drug. When she falls asleep, we clip the belly and we prep it for the spade just like any other sort of surgery would do. We vacuum the head away, <laughs> hoover it, and after we prep it with surgical uh, prep, we shift the animal on the front end into the setup. So that's where the camera is. You see the camera over here? Let me start. To lay our little friend here over, prepping for the surgery, doing the first incision into the operation to put in the needle to inflate 
the abdomen to make it bigger. Then we insert the camera and now the abdomen is already inflated and so we put in the camera and operating port to cut away the ovaries. And after that, that's me putting the instrument port. So there are two holes. One is the back where the camera goes in and after the front is where the instrument port goes in. So I can see what's happening. The whole room goes dark so we watch everything on TV. There's the ovaries being picked up. As you can see, there's the uterus over here. Looks normal. And we hook it up here. So checking the uterus, looks very normal. Then after that, using a cutting, coagulating or coagulating cutting instrument, I will coagulate and cut and isolate the ovary. So it's completely bloodless. Yep. Then we take out the ovaries, as you can see. So we sort of tease it out from that little 5mm hole. Then we turn the dog over and do the same for the other side. I wonder if they ache afterwards with all the gaps, because I know when I had my ball Humans, around, yes. Yeah. Then the after that... Then we just stitch the two little holes up. So much better, isn't it? Than yeah. the normal. And after that, they recover much yeah. faster. Like yeah, I said, the recovery is she... quite fast. Normally, they're needing to be two weeks, but she was out of action for like six weeks because she had so much swelling and bruising, and I think it's horrendous. Okay, so, um, so to your question of whether they feel sore, um, so far, the evidence isn't really showing that. I know in humans, they talk about it. They get the shoulder pain and things like that, but the dogs just seems to be fine. So uh, yes, we sort of uh, understand it happens in humans, but it doesn't appear to be as obvious in dogs for whatever reason.